evening, everybody, and welcome to our third Historic Religion competition and the presentation of the awards. Um, I'm very pleased to see you all here. And uh, just to run through, I'm Nasi Gonzari, I'm a practicing architect, also an academic, and I kind of have a number of hats. One of them is uh, I was the chair of the jury, which I will give you a little uh, background to do a little bit later. Um, I would like to just run through the order of uh, today, what we're going to do. Uh, first, uh, I will be asking Dr. Salman and Lucita to give a background to the competition and also to the villages that were selected uh, and the objectives of the competition as a whole. Of course, Dr. Lucita is the heart, energy, and aspiration and inspiration of the project. Then uh, I would introduce the jury and the process of the uh, judge, judging of the contributors and the uh, participants. And we hope at seven o'clock we'll connect to the shortlist, the shortlisted uh, entries, and they will be giving a visual presentation, about 10 minutes each, so you could all join us and actually enjoy the, uh, this is the first time we're doing this, uh, we thought it would be very good to hear them fresh, so you can actually see for yourself exactly what the uh, intentions and the ideas and the concepts of the uh, uh, entries and the competition ideas were. Then uh, Dr. Salman would be uh, announcing the winners and the commendations and uh, then we would be uh, hearing a little bit briefly from our jury members uh, about their comments and why and why not certain people were selected or not. And also we would give you a little reflection because this is the third time, the third year that we do this, we give you a little reflection of um, how things have developed over the last three years. I'm sure most of you know Dr. Salman, um, but in any case, uh, I would just like to say that one or the two, he's a writer, he's a researcher, an activist. Dr. Salman has uh, uh, Dr. Salman is a, a founder of the Palestine Land Society, uh, which is the, org the, the organizer of this whole event and what has been going on the last few years. He also the, was the coordinator of the uh, Right of the Refugee Congress as well as being a member of the Palestine National Council. He has written numerous articles, over 400 papers on the subject of refugees, and if he's not the expert, I don't know who is on the subject. Plus, of course, he's written a number of other uh, wonderful books, uh, one of which I highly recommend, at least, which is called The Atlas of Palestine. It's an extraordinary collection of maps and documentation, uh, or scientific documentation of uh, Palestinian villages. Uh, it is really a must. It's, it's a fantastic uh, but also he's written The Return Journey and also uh, Palestine, Palestine Act in 1948. Um, I also recommend you review The Return Journey because that is really his own autobiography and it's quite an extraordinary and quite funny but quite informative uh, little book to read. Okay, at this stage I would like to ask Dr. Salman to give you a background to the competition, the objective, the villages that were chosen and of course the uh, main objective of the Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Nasser. Uh, this competition would not have happened without our heroes, uh, Nasser and Yara and Rim, for the functioning of the competition.
حق العودة إلى الوطن كلمة واحدة وهو حق مقدس لكل لكل فلسطيني وهو أيضا حق قانوني مكفول بكل القوانين الدولية وهو أيضا كما بين دراساتنا ممكن حسب كل الدراسات الجغرافية والسكانية والاقتصادية وهو أيضا حق حتمي لأنه لا يمكن أن يعمل السلام دون تحقيق هذا الهدف الأسمى وهو عودة الشعب إلى وطنه نحن هنا كمهندسين لا نحلم ولا نكتفي بالأمل ولا نكتفي بالرجاء إنما نحن نضع خطة العمل للعودة ها هم الشباب المهندسون والمهندسات المعماريون الذين يقضون السنة النهائية في جامعاتهم يكون هدفهم الأول هو إحياء وإعمار القرى الفلسطينية المدمرة أو معنى آخر هو إعمار بيت أهله وجده الذي تم تدميرها فهم هنا الآن يضعون بين أيديكم خلاصة أعمالهم لإعمار هذه القرى الفلسطينية المدمرة هم كما قلت لا يحلمون بل يخططون للعودة هذه هي السنة الثالثة للمسابقة تقدم لها عشر جامعات ونرجو أن في المستقبل السنة القادمة يشمل العدد أي أي مهندس فلسطيني أو حتى شخص متعاطف في أي جامعة في العالم مسموح له السنة القادمة أن يدخل هذه المسابقة. طبعا هذا الشعور وهذا العمل المباشر الفعلي التخطيطي هو يتناقض تماما مع ما ما يخطط له أعداء هذا الشعب من أنهم يعملون له صفة القرن أو صفة القرن أو مصيبة القرن ونحن عشنا هذه السنوات منذ 48 اليوم أفشلنا 55 مشروع مشابه وبالتالي ليس لدينا شك في أن كل المشروعات التي تؤدي إلى القضاء على الشعب الفلسطيني ستنتهي إلى زوال ولا يبقى فقط إلا هؤلاء الشباب الذين يعملون هذا المستقبل فهم سينجحون إن شاء الله في المستقبل والشاهد هو شبابكم المهندسين الذين ترون أعمالهم اليوم Now, um, uh, I'm uh, very pleased to see you again this year, and I am very grateful to uh, our uh, collaborators, uh, 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 Nasser, Yara, and Rip. And of course, we have distinguished jury. Uh, I'm sure Nasser will explain who they are and their work. We're grateful to them. This is the third year of our competition. Next year, we open it to any engineer who has the good intention to build something for justice and peace. That is, the basic requirement of any human being is to have the right to live in his home. And if he is expelled from his home, he has the right to return to it. And if he returns to it and he finally demolished, then his son or grandson is here today to show us how we can build that home again. Um, now we're talking about third or fourth generation of young people um, who have not witnessed the Nakba, but they suffered from it. And what I have seen, uh, their dedication and their enthusiasm is something beyond description. For example, um, we have over the years, over the years, accumulated tens of thousands of files about 500 villages in Palestine. Thousands of files. And about the village, about uh, if it has uh, aerial photographs, uh, drawings, maps, pictures, books. We have 350 books written by the people of the village uh, about their, their, their own villages, their own their description, their own written oral history. Um, and of course, it is still in living memory. I mean, a lot of people have witnessed uh, uh, an Nakba and they still suffer from its results. So we're not talking about Roman history or Greek history. We're talking about a 
live history, a live history in which people refuse to accept the dictates of the uh, powers to be, and they say, no matter what, they can make plans to distribute us all over the world. They make plans to tell us, you can live anywhere in the world, but not in your home. We refuse that. There have been 55 peace plans, so-called peace plans, advanced against the Palestinians since uh, 1949, 55 or even 60. All these plans have something in common. One of all of them, what is common? Common that none of them, none of them apply the international law, none of them confer the international law, none of them try to implement any UN resolution uh, uh, in favor of Palestine. All of them want to get rid of Palestinians. They are ready to send them anywhere, give them any money, but provided that they don't go to back to Palestine. Now, obviously, 55 projects have failed. This is an indication that Palestinians do not really um, uh, accept anything except their country. Now, talking about the young people, um, they actually um, study what we give them and they, uh, they, they develop their own ideas. Of course, they are developing these ideas in the present day, that means we have our population, population have increased 10 times, and of course their modes of uh, occupations and work and so on have changed, and uh, the young people really are very creative in creating uh, the new, new life. Um, uh, as I said, next year we hope to invite any young architect, whether Palestinian or not, if he believes in the principle of that everyone has the right to return home, he would be, uh, you know, allowed to participate in that. Um, we we have uh, uh, this year. I mean, this year we have one or two students uh, studying architecture in the United States and maybe some other places. But we will try to get more of them um, because. Um, dreaming is one thing, but these young people, they have the right and they have the duty and they have the ability to build their own future. So we de depend on them to build that future. Um, and in spite of all difficulties, constitutional notwithstanding, or any other aber aberration of some kind, or any diversion uh, about uh, 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 the true path of peace, um, these young people uh, uh, are on the right course to build their own future. And uh, I'm sure they will do that and they will defeat any other uh, scheme to divert them from this uh, mission. Uh, thank you. And now my friend Nasser will take over. Thank you very much. Uh, um, right, so I just would like to uh, explain the process of the competition. Uh, as uh, Salman has already explained, this is the third, third year. And uh, just before I start to talk about the process, I would like to explain some of the aspirations of the competition. Three years ago, uh, Salman came to us at, with both myself and the Arsharif, we both teach at the University of Westminster as well as being practicing architects. And they asked us if we could um, assist them with the uh, competition. And we thought no better place than actually having an academic institution to support it as well as uh, a, a gallery like, which is a more of a public gallery like P21, because that would bring in number of different level of engagement uh, with the competition. I think it, because of its uh, authentic um, aspiration and the belief and the objective that Dr. Salman has written, it, it actually, com I think, it com complements the atlas of Palestine that he has created. And these could be seen as series of projects that every year we cover a number of villages and it would become an atlas of opportunities for each village. And of course, next year, when it would go to the theme of uh, the right to home, one hopes that this would extend beyond Palestine, depending on, of course, those group 
participate and choose uh, their subject. Um, the, I, I'm not going to run through uh, the 16 pages of the brief that we gave, uh, which was just uh, circulated to all the participants, but I would just kind of uh, pick up on some key words that when we introduced uh, the projects to the jury, we asked them to specifically uh, pay attention to some of these kind of key words. Um, one was best design, a creative design that relates uh, the projects, their ideas, their creative ideas to the context, both physical and cultural context. The second one was documentation, the extent of the documentation and preservation of the Kaiser landscape that the attention had to be paid by the participants, both pre-1948 and current. Another point was the uh, attention to contemporary cultural lifestyle. One of the uh, key points that came out of some of our earlier discussions after the first um, uh, continuing run that the jury actually made comments on was that we have to make sure that no project that looks at uh, reconstruction and regeneration of destroyed villages is a backward look, that it misses out on the very important issue of contemporary lifestyle, what is actually needed today that it does not become just purely a nostalgic view of the past because that's not what really the uh, intention of the competition is. And uh, no, another issue was the, that we, at the same time that we were looking for projects that gives uh, attention to the organic and physical, organic physical typology and environment of the villages because that's, that's how they develop architecturally and spatially, but also in places that in the modern context, the modern context of today, and one other um, aspect of the competition which we thought was important to pay attention to was the resources. Paying attention uh, to resources and the need for employment, economic empowerment, because that's again is one of the key issues, one of the struggles, the big struggles that Palestinians have at the moment is not that there is no resources, but there's actually a lack of access to resources. And also uh, the struggle with their economic and, employ and employment, etc., which is what we were looking for. For that reason, we were, we've asked for two scales of interventions. One is strategy, which we would see that we specifically asked for one, two sheets that looks at the strategy of the overall strategy, what kind of provisions this, uh, the project is providing, or, uh, and also looking right down to the scale of the person, the identity, the body with the space. So it, it works at both ways. And you would see that some of the um, most successful projects address the issue of agriculture, water, resources, and uh, commercial issues and empowerment of the economy. And one very important one is the right to return. Uh, that kind of, although that comes at number nine, but actually it was one of the important um, objectives of the competition is paying attention to the right to return. As you, most of you probably know, if not all, the subject of right to return is so crucial, so sensitive to the Palestinians. It's a different kind of refugees. The, the Palestinian refugees are not the same as, as other refugees. Many have been refugees for many years, 60 years, 70 years, because they want to return. Um, so that idea of how do you create places and spaces and conditions and construct conditions for Palestinians to be able to return to their home has had to be attention had to be paid. So with that in mind, we uh, every year we select or we invite a number of uh, jury. Of course, Angela Brady has been with us since the beginning, and uh, Robert Mo is the second year that uh, has joined us, and of course, uh, our wonderful architect, Mr. Bassam, has joined us this year. I would just run through um, a, a small background to uh, all of our um, wonderful uh, jury members. Angela Brady um, is a part, she's a partner at Brady Mad Review. Architects. She is the former president of the RIBA, Royal Institute of British Architects. She was also chair of Revolve Women in Architecture, which uh, was quite powerful, quite successful in the kind of uh, in, in the activities that they created and the importance of participation they gave to the women architects in the UK. Angela also curated the Diverse City Exhibition, which was um, included over 34 cities in the world, and by which included Palestine, of course. Um, and she has been awarded OBE for her contribution to architecture 
Angela has been uh, continuous supporter of uh, cause of Palestinian causes and women's causes, and of course she's been close collaborating recently with the University of Westminster and supporting the students as well. And Mr. Basam Al Shihabi, who we are very uh, pleased to have this year, um, is the managing director of Ormania uh, Planning and Engineering Office. Um, of a, of a Saudi citizen and also of a Palestinian origin. Um, Basim has been practicing for a number of years. He studied at Cairo and also he studied at Edinburgh. Uh, but then he's uh, known to be a fantastic aspiration for young students as well as young employees. One of my own students is working with, that, with him right now, yeah. which we only found out recently. Yeah. In fact, uh, yeah. just <laughs> an hour ago. <laughs> uh, uh, but Basan and their practice have received a number of awards, including our Khan Award for Architecture, and of course they have designed a number of iconic buildings in Riyadh, uh, in Saudi, uh, including the Kingdom Tower, which is one of the tallest. Uh, uh, Trade Palace. Trade Palace, and a number of other. And I now come to my uh, wonderful friend, academic friend, and uh, intellectual friend, Robert Mal, who I have known for a number of years, actually. And uh, initially we knew each other through others rather than direct. Uh, he's a professor of architecture and head of school of architecture at the uh, University of Brighton. Robert's uh, CV is very long. Um, he is uh, multitask, multi, 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 everything. He's been a number of things, including apart from uh, heading the University of West, uh, Brighton, but also a member of, he's a founding member of the free unit. He's uh, founding of the Moscow School of Architecture, he's visiting professor at a number of places, including Sweden, he's doing some really interesting stuff in Hong Kong. And he has been involved in a number of uh, live projects working with refugees and uh, communities. And of course, uh, those of you who may or may not know, um, Robert was involved in, at Unit 10, very famous unit at Architecture Association that they set up NATO at the time I was a student and I was following them. I still do. <laughs> so, uh, and finally, I'd like to introduce Yara, Dr. Yara Sharif. Uh, Yara is also an architect, an academic. Yara has been teaching at the University of Westminster, but also importantly, has been practicing as an architect in Palestine and the UK, based in the UK, but she started working in Palestine. Um, 2000, year 2000, am I right? Yeah, yeah, year 2000. She has won the Lahan Award, a project, and she's also won uh, her doctorate, uh, PhD doctorate, which was Architecture of Resistance, one of the best uh, research awards by RFBA. And she has won the Rebar Research Award, as well as the fact that she's now, she's written a wonderful book, which I really uh, recommend, called Architecture of Resistance, um, which was published um, a year ago. And also, right now, she's uh, curating a uh, very important exhibition as part of the uh, architecture, uh, Chicago Architecture Biennale, which will be starting opening on 19th of September on the uh, subject of Secrets, secrets of uh, Digital Garden, which refers to 50 villages, Palestinian villages. So if you are passing by Chicago in the next three, four months, drop in, have a look at the exhibition. Okay, stop now. And I think at this point, we are going to connect by by Skype with, uh, with Palestine and uh, Jordan, I think. Yeah. And maybe we would go and sit and uh, enjoy the presentation. Yeah.